it could already be elimination time in the college football playoff race. And some schools and some fan bases don't want to hear that. But this weekend legitimately could be elimination time for the college football playoff. Your college football playoff chances could go by the wayside this week if things don't go right for you. And that is why like, I, I know that there are so many people who dislike the expanded college football playoff because in their eyes, it puts a diminished value on the regular season. I don't think that's the case. I think it highlights more games. For instance, Alabama at Tennessee would be non-existent this weekend if we were still in a four-team college football playoff. There would be a glimmer of hope that Alabama could still make the college football playoff in a four-team college football playoff. But if you lose to Vanderbilt, that should almost be an automatic disqualifier in a four-team college football playoff. But that's not the case anymore. And so Alabama with a bad loss versus Tennessee with a bad loss becomes a really important game. Tennessee is already ranked number 11. And only the top 11 teams, unless Boise State is going to continue its march up, are going to get into the college football playoff. Tennessee is already staring at being one of the last four out. And if Alabama loses to Tennessee, Alabama is going to go right into that last four out category. Both teams have a bad loss. Both teams can view this game as if we win, we have to feel really good about our chances to make the college football playoff. And the other school, whoever loses, has to feel as if we're going to need some help from here on out because we do not control our own destiny under any stretch of the imagination. We are now reliant on chaos and other teams to do our job for us. And that is not a fun spot to be in, especially if you feel like you are really, really good. The loser of that game has no control over what happens to their postseason. And it's October. It's the middle of October. That's what makes the college football playoff, the expanded college football playoff, fun. And it's not just Alabama and Tennessee. Notre Dame. If Notre Dame goes to Georgia Tech and lays an egg, guess what? You're already on the outside looking in. Right now, as it sits today, you are on the outside looking in. You cannot afford a loss. So you go to Georgia Tech and lose. That's it. Season's over. Uh, Michigan and Illinois, they are in the doldrums. They are in the back half of the top 25. Somebody can improve their resume. The other one, guess what? That's it. Sorry. No more even opportunity for you. And then you get to a game like Texas and Georgia. Texas and Georgia should set up to be, just like last week with Ohio State, Oregon, on paper, one of the best college football games of 2024. Going into it, we should look at that game as despite Georgia being ranked fifth, I, th I think Texas is the best team in the country, and I've been on the record that I think Texas is the best team in the country since the preseason. I am high on Texas. Georgia is also very good, and I think that game comes down to quarterback play. And Quinn Ewers, I have a lot of faith in. I think he is a very, very, very good quarterback. Carson Beck has been roller coaster e First half against Alabama, disaster. Second half against Alabama, played like somebody who should be in the running to be the first overall pick in the NFL draft. So which one are you going to get? I feel like the consistency of Quinn Ewers gives Texas the advantage. But is it out of the realm of possibility that Georgia marches into Austin and gets a win? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to expect at all. You could probably even argue that it might be borderline likely that Georgia marches in there and grabs a win. Now, I think Texas has done everything that has been asked of them, right? They played Oklahoma last week in a charged-up environment. 
in a in the what you can argue, I guess, is the first big SEC game. But I don't know that Texas fans or Texas players will ever view the Oklahoma game as a big time SEC game, right? Like when you have history, when you have beef with somebody that goes back that long before you are one, before you were both even in the same conference. Now, let alone you two are the new members, the new kids on the block in a conference. I don't know how long it's going to take for Texas, Oklahoma to be like, oh, my gosh, big time SEC rivalry. But it, it wasn't last week. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. It wasn't last week that it was like, this is our first big SEC game. Nah, before it's going to be an SEC game, it's always going to be the Red River rivalry. So this is really the first big SEC game. No disrespect to Mississippi State, but this is Texas's first big SEC game. Their first big SEC test. But Texas has done everything that's been asked of him. And that's pretty much only true of Texas at this point of the college football season. You could argue that Oregon, while they've won all their games, they struggled against Idaho. They struggled against Boise State. They beat Ohio State by one point. Texas has taken care of business week after week after week. And maybe most importantly, I don't know that if you were to ask them, have you played anywhere close to your best football, that their answer would be an unequivocal yes. I don't think that's the case. They took care of Michigan on the road. They took care of Oklahoma at a neutral site. Texas has done what is asked of them. And I don't know how you go against that until it happens. I don't know how you say, I'm going to pick Georgia to win that game when Texas has lived up to the hype, has taken everybody's best shot, and has really been unchallenged. And that might be the only way you trick yourself into picking Georgia in this situation is by saying like, hey, Texas is 6-0. and Texas is due for a, for a, a, a letdown. Texas is due to have uh, a reminder. Texas is due to be humbled by an opponent like Georgia. You could probably also argue that Texas hasn't faced anybody like Georgia this year, and Georgia has experience in that aspect where they 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 played Alabama, they played Clemson. I, I don't I, I I don't know how much that matters, but when push comes to shove, I'm going to take the team that hasn't had the gigantic letdown, that hasn't had the what in the hell was that performance. So I'm going to pick Texas to beat Georgia because for a long time, I have been a like, hey, Texas, I think is going to win the national championship. I think Texas is the best team in America. And I'm I'm high on the Longhorns. I'm high on Quinn Ewers. I'm high on Steve Sarkeesian. I believe that that is a really good pairing. Those three, the quarterback, the coach, the university. Quinn Ewers, it is apparent, loves the University of Texas. Quinn Ewers, it is apparent, loves Steve Sarkeesian. It is apparent Steve Sarkeesian loves Quinn Ewers. It is apparent Steve Sarkeesian loves Texas. It is apparent that Texas loves Steve Sarkeesian and Quinn Ewers. That is a nice combo to have. When you're all in unison, when there is a fit between fan base and school and scheme and coach and quarterback, that leads to really good things. And so I'm going to pick Texas to beat Georgia on Saturday. I, do I feel super confident about it? No, I felt super confident last week that Ohio State was going to whip the hell out of Oregon. And that did not happen. That shakes your confidence a little bit. I'm on the record of saying like, hey, you know what? Got that one wrong. I don't think I'm going to get this one wrong, but I generally don't think anybody who makes any prediction thinks they're going to get one wrong. But I feel strongly about Texas. The game being in Austin only helps. I do think it's going to be a close back and forth game. One of those, I think, whoever's got the football last is going to win. So I'll take Texas, but I hope for all of the excitement that last week was in the college football landscape, for all of the like, hey, October 12th is going to be a dandy. And there were some very good games. There are still some very good games this week, too, that we're not going to Nebraska at Indiana talking about college football playoff contenders, maybe not contenders, but college football playoff chances. Indiana is a team that is probably not going to get the benefit of the doubt if they have a loss or two losses. So when IU hosts Nebraska, 
who is still, you know, not is, is, is only five and one. I think Nebraska should probably be ranked, and their their loss is to Illinois, who's ranked by a touchdown. Indiana has Nebraska, Michigan, and Ohio State still left on their schedule. It's not out of the realm of possibility that the Hoosiers go ten and two. And 10-2 and two, Indiana is probably not going to get to get into college football playoffs. So if they can win this game and then set their sights on beating one of Michigan and Ohio State, they got a shot. But if they lose on Saturday, college football playoff chances, out the window. Clemson, they lose to Virginia on Saturday, college football playoff chances, out the window. It's a big Saturday. And I can't wait to sit down and watch it. And I can't wait to chat with you about it on Sunday. Let me know who you think is on upset alert this weekend in the comments below. Would love to hear your thoughts on who should be maybe a little skittish about their matchup this weekend. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle. Appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the great college football content we're pumping out. If you are listening on the podcast feed, drop a five-star review. goes a long way, excuse me, in helping out the channel. I'll see you on Sunday for another episode of the Daily Huddle.